Hour here on BBC One, after a day never to be forgotten on the big red bus. There's days on the buses which are humdrum and ordinary, and there's days on the buses which aren't. London's day of terror, the view from the drivers. See, I had a bus full of people down at uh, Lee. As soon as they heard the news over the radio, they all got off. They're checking all the vehicles coming in, and apparently a lot of the drivers are also checking, get, getting people to like open up their bags and stuff like that as they're coming on the buses now, because obviously everyone's kind of on high alert. We can't hide. That's our job. We, we, we move people around London. And you know, if, we, if we packed up tomorrow, we can't pack up forever. Don't ever become a bus driver if you enjoy a morning lie-in. This is dawn, just after dawn, on a bright summer's morning. Dawn's 39. She's been a driver for six years in South London, where she lives with her chap and her ten-year-old son, Liam. Mornings tend to the hectic. Oh, blimey, it's like having a bloody woman in, that in the house with me, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Let me do this bit at the back for you. Oh, let's have me a cup of tea before I shoot off. Otherwise, I won't be able to function for the day. Only one in 20 bus drivers are women, so there's a push on to encourage more. Is it hard combining, like, being a bus driver, do you think, with so, up kids? And well, stuff? I'm lucky in the fact that I've only got the one child. I mean, there aren't, like, women in the garage. I've got babies to look after. So it's not so hard for me now, but when he was younger, it was hard because I was still my lates then. So I was going to bed at maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, still getting up at 7 to get him up ready for nursery and everything, you know. And because he's getting that bit older, it's not so much of a problem now. He more or less looks after himself. He goes off to his friends' houses, you know, they're quite good at like, looking after him and everything. Down at the garage, mm. what's your role down there? I'm a bus driver. That is my role. But also, now and again, they'll have little jobs going around the garage where I help with the run-outs. Also, um, you know, if somebody is off, like one of the mentors, and they need somebody to take a new driver out, I'll get to do that. You don't tend to associate bus driving with pink and wispy femininity. When I was little, I was a tomboy. Climbing trees, my granddad said I should have been born as a boy, because, you know, the way that I was. And as I grew up, I suppose I've kept that kind of... Um, Butch. No, I'm not a butch. That's the wrong word. I'm just um, a tomboy. Yeah, I'm not very feminine. You know, I'm not into floaty dresses and high heel shoes and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not butch. Bus. They just automatically assume if you to be a female bus driver, you've got to be gay. And, you know, it's not the case. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm whatever you want me to be, darling. Whatever turns you on. Dawn's one of the 3,000-odd bus drivers working for London Central and General. They run 1,100 buses from their garages in South London. Dawn works at New Cross. Dawn isn't actually in charge of the bus station, but you could be forgiven for thinking she is. Lily! Aren't you open the doors on them? Oh, for crying out loud, I can't open these stupid doors on them. Move it now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I get along with mo mostly everybody, do you know what I mean? But maybe, you know, it's not everything. There's so many of us working here, I can't expect the whole garage to like me. So there's probably a few in there that might think I'm a mouthy cow, I've got too much to say for myself. Mm. Which, yeah, you know, when I get a bee in my bonnet about something, I don't let it go. I have to do something about it. That's me, I've always been the same way. Can you put your foot on the brake, please, darling, instead of doing your eye makeup? <laughs> they enjoy a feisty woman at London buses. The women here are all very strong women. And the argument for that is they have to be. What we find is that, that even the, the quieter, more reserved women have to then learn very quickly to stand up for themselves, otherwise they'll be trampled in the rush. It's not just the women who need a certain steeliness. You'll have to keep your nerve to get through your driving test. Uh. Last week, Sebastian had a dark moment of the soul. Shapes dejectedly back to the consoling company of his young daughter. Eat them. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't eat them apples. No, yeah. That's good. Cool. I'm okay. You are, yeah? Yeah. Today, Sebastian is facing his second driving test. Trust me, you're ready. I am ready. All right, you're prime. Right, mate. Good luck. Cheers, mate. I'm going to do it for you. The bus test examiner is a regular visitor at London Central and General. Every week, another 10 drivers go through their test. Nice to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Right, wait for this day? Yeah, if you just take a seat there. Right. I've just got a little bit of paperwork to do, first of all. OK, then, mate. What I need from you is your driving licence and your theory certificate. It's all on there, Steve, really, mate. OK. All ready is sorted for you. Right, first of all, show me whereabouts the emergency engine cut-off device is located on this bus. Right. And when you show, show me, tell me how it operates and when you use it as well. Right, OK. Seems to be handling that okay, doesn't he? Yeah. Bit nervous. Well, I say, yeah, he's a bit nervous, but nerves ain't the problem. It's self-control that's the problem. If he can control himself, yeah, at the right times he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Right. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to do the reverse exercise. Right. Now don't drive any further forward than these two cones at the front at any time. Right. And obviously try not to touch any cones across the other boundary lines. Yep, got it. Okay then? Okay. Okay then, Sebastian, when you're ready. This was the point where last week Sebastian met his Waterloo. Nice, wasn't it? Yeah, Today he sails through. Let me look at the back and see if I'm in line. I think I'm fine. Look at that. Yeah, we're cool, yeah. Yeah. The blue learner bus carries one examiner one would-be driver, and the hopes of Sebastian's daughter that her dad will end the day a driver. An early morning bus station plays host to all sorts of uninvited guests. Is there which one? This should be interesting. As morning alarms go, dawn is at the more strident end of the range. Oh, good morning! £30 rent, please. <laughs> yeah, you have to come off now because we're going to need to move the bus, OK? This is another little problem we have. We normally put them through the wash with the windows open. <laughs> but he's going now. I told him he's got to pay £30 bed and breakfast, you know. The canteen's up there so he can get a bacon sarnie. He's turned down, he can have lodgings if he wants. He's turned all you just got to pay for it, unfortunately. No, no, you've got some people come in and they've offered him a, a place to stay, but you don't want to know. Well, it's about three or four of them, isn't there? The regulars that come and sleep here at night. He's a regular sofa. They get left alone. You'll be surprised what goes on in these buses at night, you know. They've even had um, ladies of the night bringing little, you know, their little things here as well. Shunt, shunt, a go-go. Blue bus, blue mood for Sebastian. He's failed again, and he's got to go home and tell his daughter. I'm disappointed. Disappointed. Not a good day. This time, he's bumped a couple of curbs. Another rather gloomy autumnal feeling day with some patchy rain in places. Most of that falling across eastern counties of England, but it could be quite heavy for a time for East Anglia and South East England. We'll lose the heaviest of the rain by lunchtime, and then we're just talking about a scattering of... The sound of running water can have an unfortunate effect, especially on gentlemen drivers on long trips. If you don't want to know about the toileting habits of London buses, then look away now. Quick. I found bottles in here. Oh, you haven't. I know they do it. That's another little trick. Lucas, they bottles. The bloke shoes them. For what? If they need to go, to to go toilet. toilet. They've actually put it, put it down there. Oh, you're joking. That is disgusting. That there. Oh, so I don't touch Lucas, though. Yeah. I see a lot on the bus stand. Yeah. But they say they're allowed to do it, isn't it? But as much as they're trying to get women into the industry, they don't really sort of make any kind of reservations for us in making sure we've got toilet facilities and all that kind of stuff. And I better go and drink my tea. Yeah. Right, as we've had a little moan. All right, I know. Ooh. 
on a rainy day shunting round the depot, there's time to reflect on the ways of the great British public. The ones I can't stand is when you've got the old girl standing at the bus stop. This is about to step on, you get a, like, a bunch of kids come round and just push you in front of them. Like, you know? I so I pull them up and I go, stop! And I shout at them, I say, oh, get back off the bus and let that lady get on first, because you've got no bloody respect. But you get some of the old dears are a bit rude as well, oh, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They so give as good as they get. For you. you know, you wouldn't be where you are now if it wasn't for us. But then you get the other ones that give you cans of drink yeah. and chocolates and bags of sweets and stuff. And prawns. Oh. Prawns? Oh, an old man one day, come on, do you want a prawn, love? <laughs> and I was like, no, thanks, love, I'm allergic to them. <laughs> yeah. I used to work oh, as stagecoach. We had a um, blind bloke yeah, on with his scary. dog. Yeah. Right, big Alsatian it was. He used to go, like, go on, say, you back out and give him your sweet. <laughs> oh, no. I go, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But he was a beautiful dog, I've got to give him a love I like dogs, but you know, you don't allow them to lick paces like they're not supposed to, because they lick their parts where they, they're supposed to, and I just don't want to lick in my face. Ew. Look up with his belly, look. Turn that up, mister, look at your ear. There's been an explosion at Liverpool Street on the underground. <clears throat> Today? Yeah, yeah, I don't know, it's just natural, or walking, walking wounded or something. Shall I go and get my radio? Yeah, I might do, Hold yeah. on. As you've been hearing, British Transport Police say that emergency services were called to London's Liverpool Street Station after reports of a loud bang this morning, or according to some reports, some kind of explosion. British Transport Police believe a power surge has affected stations including King's Cross and Aldgate East. Some people are thought to have been injured. There's been another one at Edgware. Another one today? Just now, another one at Edgware. Have you heard that? There's another one now, Edgware Road. Edgware Road? Yeah. At the moment, and from these early reports, it does look like this wasn't a terrorist incident, but it was some sort of accident, and it was something to do with the power supply. From what I heard, they've sent down at least 100 ambulances up and down uh, all the stations. Um, and that's people, five stations, isn't it, now? Yeah, they're saying? people are coming out injured, uh, blood pouring down their heads, and bewildered days, they don't know what's going on. I mean, obviously, I had a bus full of people down at uh, Lee. As soon as they heard the news over the radio, they all got off. I mean, I, I don't believe it's a power surge. I hope it is. I, for the sake of London, I hope it is a power surge. But just dreading what's going to happen for the rest of the day now. The first blasts were reported just before 9 o'clock between Aldgate and Liverpool Street stations and at Edgware Road station. At first they were blamed on power surges. There have since been reports of an explosion on a bus in Tavistock Square in London. Government ministers are meeting to discuss the situation. That's not power surge. Yeah. Hospitals are on major incident alert. The point is that, like last time, the younger driver they need reassurance. Everything's all right, so no negative sort of talking to him. All right. Sorry, right, what's my shoulder bone? Right, yeah. and all. Okay. <laughs> I'm still. I've got to go in and have a chat. No, I'm going to go up there and have a look on the TV anyway. But that's it. Reassurance and everything's all right. Okay. This is what remains of the number 10 bus, which was travelling through Tavistock Square near Euston Station when an explosion blew away its upper floor. The Tavistock Square bus belongs to another company, but London Central and General's drivers have to drive 100 routes all over London. We do have to go there, you know. It's our choice. We don't have to go there, you know. It's our choice. All right? As we are driving, we don't have to go. It's our choice now. What is it throwing? Are you throwing that bus? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. 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 You're going to be getting the heebie-jeebies up them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, but don't. Do you know what I mean? They're already worried as it is. No, but more than one for God. No, but that's your decision. Do you know what I'm saying? You don't have to go be fronting the other drivers. Do you know what I mean? I'm my Willie, my friend, no, Willie. <laughs> Sorry, darling. For months now, those who should know have been warning us it's only a matter of time before the terrorists target London. Today, the chilling sound of hundreds of emergency vehicles announced that dreaded day had come. Fatalities and everything, yeah. And that's just from one station. ridiculous, right? The advice to the public uh, is to stay where they are. Almost all travel facilities across London are uh, closed at the moment. There's a steady stream of calls from anxious friends and families of drivers. Their fear is that their loved one is trapped in the chaos of central London. 
I've just seen him actually there, he's okay. Everyone from here is okay at the moment. Yeah, I've just been talking to him now. Thank you. Bye bye. Did you see that drawing? I've seen him this morning. No, I haven't seen it. I saw him when he signed on this morning. What's that? I've got his sister on the phone. He signed on at 5.58 this morning. So we haven't seen him since? Well, we won't because he's on the 360s. He stays at Boxall, doesn't he? Unless, unless he's got a long break and he's going to come back here. Let's have a look at 326. At the training school in Camberwell, there's urgent decisions being made by manager Eric Dale. He's worried about the trainees out on the road. In, um, the instructors so that um, Mel. they have made aware very quickly that they can't take their training buses into central London. We've probably got about 18 training buses currently out there. The company has 60 trainees and can have up to 30 blue training buses on the road at any one time. They've called all the buses in, haven't they? So did you go downstairs and see the garage to see what's going on? The fact that they will know because they've all been ordered to do a complete security check. Well, I definitely can't get through. Can you get through all right? No. Come out, mate. Huh? Come out. You want to come out? Come out, yeah. Why? Because of the explosions. Come out, mate. There's definitely a bus blowing up in Tavistock Square at the moment. Bye. He said he don't want me to go out on my bus. Floyd. He said, don't you guys, he don't want me to go out. No, but what, it, what Willie's saying is that, because a lot of the drivers are a bit scared to go out, that we may go out just to sort of show them that it's all right. But he's saying, no, 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 no. If there's any, if there's bombs and stuff going off on buses, you don't want me out there. I'm a bit nervous. There's two um, family members that have run up and they're concerned about their mum and brother. They're all 360s. They're due to come at five. And they're going through. Do you know what's happening? Just uh, use your energy. 421, 421. You're breaking up at the moment. Is it possible for you to ring me on the landline? Is there anybody at Vauxhall that I could find out for these two drivers? I've heard no problems. No, it's just to check. Yeah, I realise that. Yeah, they can ring their family. Because all the mobiles have gone down. Yeah, no, the whole network's I couldn't get you a call. I couldn't get you a call. Right. Um, are you OK? If you're both OK, you're well, it's just chaos. I mean, there's just loads of reports about lots of things happening, but nothing actually definite yet. So all we know of so far is one bus. And uh, that's not looking good. So. Nothing happening anyway. What exactly are you looking for? I don't know. <laughs> just to see something strange attached to it, I suppose. Buses were commandeered to ferry the injured to hospital, all part of the major incident plan. The bus service, already a terrorist target, now used as makeshift ambulances. Drivers from New Cross have played their part in what amounts to an evacuation of central London. Take as many people as you can. Don't take their buses. Yeah. If someone want to pay... Who's got a fag? Let them, let them, let them travel free. Don't, don't well, challenge them. That's what I said. That's what I said. And I took them, man. About hundred people, you know. You? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No bus was full up. Oh my God. And that was nine o'clock. I think when the bomb gone off, innit? Yeah. Was, was you bus worried? Bus I'm telling you, man. <laughs> But letting all those people on, did you think maybe one of them? Yeah, and then the people, those that picked them up, no one know where I'm going. Yeah. They get on the bus and they ask me, driver, what, where this bus goes? I said, elephant. Mm. Oh, hundred people. Yeah, what you're saying is, did you think that maybe one of them people getting on may have been somebody else with a bomb? No, did that go, did no, that cross your mind no, at all? No, no. It's about reassuring people and seeing that we're managing the situation as best we can. And um, it's very difficult because you know there are a lot of people who are going to be inconvenienced, but at the end of the day, the safety of the people who work for us is what it's about. And we're checking all the buses. At some point, we'll get the OK to start putting them back out again, but for the time being, it's so uncertain that we have to put all the buses back away in the garage. Well, I'll tell you what, in all my years of driving, I've never, ever seen this before where they've recalled the buses in, ever. 
So it just goes show pretty serious, whatever's going on over there is, you know, it is. Open all the doors, mate. All right, save it here, mate. Set your stuff on yeah. this, mate. All right. They're checking all the vehicles coming in, and apparently a lot of the drivers are also checking, get, getting people to like open up their bags and stuff like that as they're coming on the buses now, because obviously everyone's kind of on high alert, which I think we've got every right to do anyway, really. So far, 700 casualties have been confirmed. The London Ambulance Service said they've treated 45 patients with serious and critical injuries, burns, amputations, and fractured limbs. The pictures of the bus. Well, I see it on the, on the TV, it's the bad. It's just been blown off and it's No, nah, it's terrible. Apparently, there was no survivors on that bus either, was there? Well, you're talking about 40 plus dead now. So, it must be mainly that bus, I think. Because mm. it's just been blown to bits. You know, just the way it progressed as well went from one little explosion on the underground to like m mayhem around London. The canteen is a nervier place than usual. But instructor Dave Carr has been sent to round up his trainees. Damn, it's chaos, mate, chaos. There we go, bombs going off everywhere, and we've still got a guy on our train. <laughs> Sebastian has got a third test to prepare for. We are going out on the road. Yes. All right, but we, we can't go anywhere in central London, obviously, as if we would, you know. No. All right, so. Uh, we're just going to try and crack on now, aren't we? It's an assertion of normality on a day that's very far from normal. When there is a crisis, people do pull. They do go that extra mile, and that's what makes you uh, proud, I guess, to be part of this industry, which um, it's nice to get an opportunity to be proud. And whether you're a manager, whether you're a cleaner, whether you're a bus driver, whether you're an engineer, they all done it. Hopefully, it never happens again. Um, but you know, if you're a target, you're a target, and all we can do is try and do as much as we can to minimise it happening in the future. It's important that those engaged in terrorism realise that our determination to defend our values and our way of life is greater than their determination to cause death and destruction to innocent people in a desire to impose extremism on the world. Whatever they do, it is our determination that they will never succeed in destroying what we hold dear in this country and in other civilized nations throughout the world. Oh, look at that, right where I want it. But how are you really sort of feeling inside yourself, knowing that you're going to be driving the bus and going into the centre of town today? Well, I'll let you know when I get there. Because <laughs> at the moment, I'm not too sure, seriously. I think they're just asking us just to sort of be extra vigilant, obviously, at the stands, checking our buses, keeping an eye on what's coming on the vehicles. I wish we could have somebody on the bus searching everybody's bags. It'd make our life a lot safer, and the passengers as well, but it's not feasible. You know, it just seems like a bad dream yesterday does. So when I saw my son yesterday, he was actually quite tearful and said that, you know, he didn't really want me to go out driving and that it could have been my bus and everything. I said, yeah, but Liam, I said, the amount of buses that are driving around London, the chances of one of them actually being on my bus is very slim anyway. But, you know, I've got a living to make, I've got bills to pay, things to do, so I need my job. And were you travelling on the buses I yesterday? Was. I travelled to Asia Road. It was um, a lot of chaos. Police were there and uh, ambulances and uh, people coming out of the station with their hands over their head, Paddington Station. Something Paddington Station. And uh, it was very sad, but people are kind and people gather round and help each other. There's a great spirit of unity and compassion among them. It's just in the way that's to know that, you know, terrorism is real. But in the end of the day, there is still hope that, you know, no matter what they do, no matter what's happened from yesterday, people's lives to, can still go on. I think, you know, the fact that I've actually gone out and just got on with it, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. 
But it just doesn't seem that busy today. It really doesn't. Started making you wonder, you know, the old bus driving and that. We're driving around and you don't know who or what you've got on your buses. Just take advantage of the situation like that. And then you had those hero bus drivers who went back into the scene to evacuate people and that. You know, so it's quite an important job, the old bus driving. I made sure to warn the security guard, make sure he'd done his job last night and not um, let nobody through that gate get on our bus. And I was the first one in checking the bus this morning, so I had a good look over. <laughs> and me in between the wheels and all that. <laughs> Nothing hidden between the wheels. The grind goes on. Two tests failed and a third one looming. In town, Dawn is having her quietest route in years. It was just up here that bus got um, blown up. I think you could still see it up there, you know. I'm sure I just saw it. I suppose it is quite nerve-wracking to just think that I'm just down the road from where a few, you know, quite a few people were badly injured and got killed yesterday. No matter how vigilant you are, you just take the most well-dressed person getting on the bus with a nice little handbag, but then they could be the ones that are carrying the bomb from hell. It's been all right. It's been all right. I think there's a lot of worry people out there still, but then it is only the day after. I reckon give it another week and it'll probably be sort of like something else has happened in the news. And this, I mean, obviously people are still going to remember, but that kind of initial fear they've got right now is going to be gone, I think, definitely. Because I'm not going to have no qualms about going back out on the bus tomorrow. Less people travelling around? I don't I know. I, I, that, no. I actually think there's more people travelling really? on the buses now than there was before. Because a lot of... Uh, I think since that, a lot of people have moved off the... Uh, underground. Underground onto the buses. One guy came on the bus today and he asked me for um, Royal Courts of Justice. Okay. And I said to him, it was right near the train station, I said, well, you can take the train. He said, no, 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 no train, no train. So um, stayed on the bus, he took the bus. But I think people feel safer on the bus in the sense that easy access in and out, quick, quick access. The only thing I'd say is different is that more people are standing downstairs now. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're literally having to force people to go up the stairs, you know, because it gets so full and you're like, you know, those of you who haven't got vertigo, can you please go upstairs, let people get on the bus, you know, they don't like going upstairs. So you tend to notice things more in the luggage rack now, you know, especially when somebody puts something there and walks off and leaves it, and obviously now it's a bit of panic if someone does, you know, forget a bag or whatever, you don't know whether to touch it or not or what yeah. to do. The public transport system has been attacked and we're in the front line of that. And we will obviously not endanger anyone who works for us and if, if people didn't want to do anything, whether it was about going out the next day or about driving particular routes or uh, were just stressed by the whole thing, you know, we took a fairly pragmatic view to that. Um, but we can't hide, that's our job, we, we, we move people around London and you know, if, we, if we packed up tomorrow, we can't pack up forever. Next week on Big Red Bus, a fond farewell. How far would you go to get your final photos of Rootmaster buses on the streets of London? We got knocked down once taking photos of buses, and people were saying, oh, well, at least you got your photograph. <laughs> and a fond hello to London's newest bus driver. Mia passes her test. She's ever so pleased. <laughs> I'm passed. Scenes and characters on the route of the number 31 bus in London tomorrow night to the world's end is on BBC Four at seven. And on Saturday night, BBC Four goes bus mad with a whole evening of programmes starting at 7.30.